Hello everyone, Are here. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how they prepare a traditional meal from the Baganda culture. And uh, I'm going to show you the entire process, all right, from how they peel the matoke and all that. Uh, we're going to dive into it. And of course, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you do subscribe. Uh, we're trying to make a 10,000 subscribers. The goal is to make a 100K before the year ends. I know we can do it. So uh, let me bring you along. It's of course a village setting and I have uh, the ladies right over there they're going to show us each and everything so i'm really excited uh, for today's video uh, let me just uh, flip my camera and show you guys uh, what is going on uh, right here so we do have a pumpkin uh, right over here this yellow one and then we do have a cassava uh, this is cassava this one uh, right here we do have a sweet potatoes uh, this is also part of the traditional food and then we do have uh, <laughs> these are small eggplants they're actually very bitter but people really really love them we have our chicken uh, right here we've already slaughtered it we have a ground nuts uh, those are ground nuts and of course we have a beef uh, right here and then you have our carrots a uh, green pepper tomatoes uh, right over there yes, and then we also have uh, the greens as well and right now they are peeling the matoke ready to be cooked as you see if you've never peeled banana <laughs> that is how they peel you need a special skill in the hands so they just uh, throw it uh, right over there right now they're going to cover the matoke you can see how they do it uh, with banana leaves and then they also tie it with banana fibers. So this requires a special skill, guys. <laughs> I'm sure very many Ugandan women actually don't know how to wrap the matoke like this. <laughs> you have to be a very, very experienced, you know, to be able to do this. So you have to tighten it uh, very well, but it keeps a uh, really, really firm. Right now they are peeling the cassava. So she's peeling the sweet potato. So right now guys, they are putting beddings in the saucepan. So this is our cassava and sweet potatoes. In the Baganda culture, they use banana leaves to wrap the food. So the potatoes are down and the pumpkins are being placed on top. This pumpkin looks really sweet already, even before I taste it. <laughs> wrapping the pumpkin and the potatoes as well and the cassava using a banana fibers so this is our saucepan you can see they have laid the bottom with uh, some banana things and then they're going to get this package and place it right on top I'm going to place another one right on top wow <laughs> interesting and then they're going to cover this very well. Wow. I have to have very strong fire cause <laughs> these are two huge packages, guys. Oh my God. So right now they are wrapping the big saucepan, guys. And <laughs> as you can see, it's an entire mountain. It's not easy. You have to be very skilled to wrap the food like this. Wow, they are still wrapping the saucepan, guys. <laughs> this is quite a lot of work. This is our saucepan of food. See how huge it is. And they've placed it here, so they're going to make a fire with firewood and we we'll start cooking. So guys, the fire is in and the food is being cooked. So we are now preparing the chicken and of course uh, they first washed it so we have to first roast it a little bit before this is a charcoal stove before it gets put in the banana leaves as well and to rache and cook to soak our no kumuriro yes so she says roasting helps to add the flavor or the aroma to the chicken it's better than when you just start cooking it but when you first roast it and i think it also helps it to get ready very well because you do like half of the cooking here and then you take half the other side so i'm really excited and of course our matoke is cooking <laughs> though we have a lot of uh, smoke going on 
because it is tucked so well they don't need to add like another saucepan on top uh, these banana leaves are just enough to keep in the entire heat so no heat is escaping all the food is inside here it's being steamed and I've been told this is going to take about three hours so we are still here we are not even halfway yet but uh, of course I'm really excited I know the food is going to be amazing guys so right now we are peeling the the veggies that we are going to use to cook the food and you have to first peel the tomatoes so we don't really marinate <laughs> we just use like natural veggies uh, that's what we add in the sauce we don't use any cooking oil as well like the food has to be very very organic you really don't add anything that is not natural guys we are actually cooking the veggies so the onions the carrots the green pepper as i cut she's cooking right over there on a small <laughs> charcoal stove as well say hi gamba hi you say hi what's your name when i'm eating <laughs> She's called Whitney, she has been crying. Uh, so guys, uh, this is the time to prepare our chicken. As you see, she gets this chicken that we grilled a little bit. I put it on this nicely banana leaf. If you see this banana leaf, it's, it doesn't have any holes in it, you know. And then add our veggies on top and then you see she's covering it. So she's going to wrap this and make sure that nothing is going to penetrate the banana leaf. It's like very young and very tender banana. That's what they use to wrap it. So it will be like an entire package, little package by itself. Yeah, so we call it Luombo, uh, that's the Luganda word. <laughs> it's actually my first time as well to see them uh, preparing Luombo. I've always eaten it, but I actually never see it being prepared. So it's like kind of interesting. And then of course, uh, she has to tie it with banana leaves, as you see. She has to like carefully uh, tie it and wrap it. So aunt, Katuluno Luombo, eh? Mm. Mm. So I was asking her why they cook in banana leaves uh, this is quite interesting guys so our chicken is right inside here and all the tomatoes and all the veggies that we used so she says uh, this is a culture meal and even at weddings when they have like a very huge function this is the standard way of cooking a meal you have to wrap it in banana leaves uh, these are banana leaves so a very interesting interesting and because it is very very tasty all the aroma as it cooks will stay right here on the inside so that's how it's done and i really can't wait to test when this is ready so she's making the second package adding more chicken as well and of course she's going to wrap beef the same way as well very interesting guys wow uh -huh. so i was asking her why they don't put water actually because <laughs> i always thought they put water so she says the water that will come out of the chicken will just cook with itself so there is no need to add any extra water uh, this is our dodo as well uh green veggies uh we put some green veggies i don't know the english names but we call it dodo bugu or nakati so we are also still going to wrap it in banana leaves so banana leaves is the thing here you have to wrap food in banana leaves guys banana leaves a banana fiber no bananas no life within the waganda culture because everything is about the bananas the matoke <laughs> So they utilize each and every part of the matoke to cook the food, they eat the matoke itself. I mean, interesting here. These are our two packages of chicken. So right now she's going to wrap uh, the beef as well. So I'm trying to find out how special are these little leaves because I might be scared that my food might penetrate and I lose the soup. <laughs> <laughs> so she says first of all you have to put enough layers this is one two three these are three layers of the banana leaf but this banana leaf is also the young one and then they first do it with fire uh, like pass fire on top of it so that it can become tender maybe i should use the word tender and really soft so our chicken and our beef is here are very ready to be cooked guys we are also going to wrap uh, these little eggplants we've finished washing them the saucepan she has to first lay the bottom before they put in our our chicken and beef so she has to put in these things eh? these ones right here 
in the saucepan to make sure that it has a nice foundation for our food to properly sit. And then right over here, this is water with some veggies and some onions. We are going to put in our groundnut sauce. And beef is being put in a saucepan. You can see those are our three wrappings, two for chicken, one for beef, and we are going to fold it nicely. Guys, we've added in our ground nuts, and because the ground nut is very big and very thick, as you see, we have to first let the water boil so that it can easily melt all the oils. So guys, our chicken and beef and veggies are inside here, and we are going to cook for about one to two hours. Uh, this is another second fireplace. A uh, one is right over there so I'm excited I'm already hungry <laughs> this process is actually very very long and it's also a lot of work a lot more than I actually thought uh, there are two ladies who are preparing this food I thought one person would be enough but it's actually not enough so it's very tedious you know you can't cook this type of meal every day you can't do all this work every day for the most part this is usually done on like a special occasion that's when they cook it like this in a traditional manner mm. guys the food is almost we are almost eating so uh, this is our matoke and everything else so right now they're going to press the matoke so when we prepare matoke bananas in our in buganda culture you have to press it so that it becomes like one solid form your hands have to be very strong because it's very hot so she picks a little bit of the water to cool the hands and then press looks yum 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 guys bananas is a typical ugandan meal if a visitor comes to visit you at home you have to serve them pressed banana <laughs> you have to serve it to them if you don't they'll think you've not welcomed them so guys you see she has finished to press the banana but we are going to put it back on the fire because our chicken and beef are still cooking because if we let it lose heat then it's going to become a little bit hard and we want it to stay like very soft and very hot it's a lot of work guys <laughs> i thought we were ready to eat i mean i still have to be patient oh my god this is hectic eh? cooking is not easy guys cooking is not easy so the pumpkin and the cassava want to go back to the fire because we don't want them to get overcooked but the thing the difference with the banana is that you can overcook it and it will still be fine so the banana can stay on fire even from morning up to evening to keep it really soft whereas if we put the pumpkin back it will become like really mushy and very too soggy so so guys just want to show you a pan of village life so this is uh, a place when they wash utensils they just put them right over there of course as she's washing clothes as you can see in a basin there is this a little house that is <laughs> it has a shape of a hut but it's not a hut and then the fence has reeds these are called reeds dry reeds then there is this big tree in the compound and then that is our food uh, right over here our sauce is right over here cooking as well then these guys have a banana plantation so we literally got the matoke from this banana plantation so this is village life uh, there is a lot of fresh air <laughs> So guys, uh, we are getting ready to eat and I have my friends here. You can see we are all set and of course you have to sit down. So you guys, you're going to tell me your names, right? What's your name? Rahuma. Rahuma, uh-huh. And the Simba. Simba, uh-huh. Mutiava Pita. Mutiava Pita, uh-huh. Rasko Machate Imran Machate Naro. Rasko Machate. Imran. Imran. Okay, this one is called Nicky Imran. Name. Eh? Nickname. Nickname is Imran. So are you guys? Said I'm Mary. You also called Mary. Eh? Yes. Neletisha. Neletisha. Eh? Peterson. Raymond. Peterson. Eh? I knew. So, what do you like to eat most? What's your favorite food? Rice. Rice. Uh huh. <laughs> 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 what do you like to eat? You tell me. Yes, chicken. You like chicken? Uh huh. This one likes chicken. This one likes rice. For you, what do you like? Chicken and banana. Chicken and banana. Uh huh. And then you, what do you like? Sweet potato. Sweet potato. Wow. <laughs> we are going to tell them. Can you say the word subscribe? 
You say subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> sub. Can you say sub? Subscribe. Sub. Sub. So, you speak loudly? Sub. Sub. Subscribe. Sub. So you say subscribe. Subscribe. Sub. So let's first practice the first time. Eh? So we say I say one, two, three, four. Five. Subscribe. <laughs> So guys, uh, we are ready to eat. Uh, our cassava is ready. Uh, the chicken, the beef, everything is ready. I have here my crew. <laughs> we just want to dig into the food, you know, and enjoy it. So. So guys, I'm going to test the food. I have my matoke right here. And I want to test the chicken first. <laughs> The matoke is very hot guys, it's so hot. And of course you have to eat when you are sitting down in Baganda culture and of course you also eat with your hands. You don't bring forks, don't work. So this is the chicken. Very nice. Huh? Wow. The matoke is very, very soft with a chicken soup. Wow, so let's test the piece of chicken. This is a chicken thigh. The groundnut sauce with a matoke as well. <laughs> wow, I love groundnut sauce and matoke. <laughs> the kids are laughing at me. <laughs> this is very good. <laughs> So let's test the beef. This is the beef, guys. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. So when you come to Uganda, guys, you have to try Luombo with matoke cooked in banana leaves, with beef cooked in banana leaves. It's the best. <laughs> the sweet potato with some chicken stew, guys. Wow, this is so good. Yeah? <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to try a piece of cassava with a groundnut sauce. Wow, this is good. Yeah? I love cassava. So we are going to try these little eggplants. I'm going to put them in my groundnut sauce. And I want to try them with a pumpkin. I want to try them with a pumpkin and I see how this tastes. Wow, this is nice. The pumpkin is really good. So sweet. Who likes pumpkin? <laughs> I give you pumpkin. <laughs> Guys, this food is very good, and the fact that it's not overspiced, it's very natural, so you can easily eat a lot of food before you get tired of it. That's the secret with this food, that's what I've noticed. Guys, I have finished eating. The food was very, very good. I'm so, so full. I've enjoyed myself. Oh my God, this was really, really good. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Baganda culture food. And of course, I'll be bringing you more videos on the food and the culture and each and everything. Of course, uh, subscribe. If you're not yet subscribed, you're trying to make a 10,000 subscribers and want to make 100K before their ends. I know we can do it. So make sure that you do subscribe. I post a 2 
times each and every week and uh, yeah uh, let me know what you think in the comment section i share your thoughts as well and i'll see you guys on the next video bye bye